It's that time of the week again. Match review. If you guys don't know what match review is, you guys send me videos to my email, right? Share them in the Google Drive or figure out another way. People have been sending them to me through iCloud. Just share them with me. My email is down below in the description. If you guys like my content, you like my videos, you like a match review, at 10K subscribers, uh, I wanna start vlogging my MMA training and then I wanna train for a fight. And I think that would be really cool. So show some love. But today in match review, we have Jacob Hamid, Hamad. Jacob Hamad versus Anthony White. Jacob's a pretty nasty wrestler. He's like, he's really good. Much better than I was in high school. But he does make a couple mistakes and he does almost get put on his back like twice. And there's some things that even you guys can learn from it. Like even beginners, all right? So, uh, the video starts with the match, like already started, I guess uh, the first period just started. They're tying up, they're tying up. Now, Jacob is the one that sent me the video. All right, Jacob is the one that sent me the video, and Anthony, the kid in green, just snapped and went for a shot, and Jacob did something perfect, right? He just circled back, stepped that leg back so that he couldn't grab it, and then he goes for a reshot. Now, the problem is, he stepped back. The time that it took for him to reset his stance, because he can't shoot off of both legs, was long enough for this kid to think, like, get like get my hands into position you know what i mean if you could just step back if you could just step back and then like drop onto that front knee drop onto your left knee then that'd be like prime that would be prime that's what the highest level wrestlers do you can practice that and get really good at it you practice stepping that leg back off of a shot and then level changing with that with the uh, knee that's already in front and shooting like that and then what happens is as the person defending you're trying to get your hands underneath his armpit and as the person attacking, you're trying to get your hands in between his in between his arms. Like the person that get finds the underhook wins in this position. I think this happened in the last video too. But you shoot with a high elbow, right? This one's tucked in, this one gets under, and this elbow's high. So he he gets a bulldog on you. So he gets a pretty nasty bulldog on you and almost puts you to your back. Boom, right there. Now you do a good, really good job of rolling out, squaring back up. He's still got that front headlock and then he does an outside trip, back, you square up, and then you go for the body lock. Now for those of you that don't know, Jacob's whole objective is to get his hips directly in front of his opponents, all right? Like when he's being controlled, he's trying to keep his hips and knees and ankles as far away from his opponents as possible. So what that means is when he was on his back, he had to get his hips out from under his opponent, turn them over, and try and get them square. They get out of bounds, they're back to wrestling. I always thought you had to make contact before you left the first circle. Now, ooh. Goes for a couple shots. Now right here, this is, this happens a lot. The wrestlers are just trying to figure out their timing. They're trying to figure out the other person's timing, like, like how they react to certain things, how quickly, how much time do I have to get from one place to another, what can I hit? You know what I mean? That's why they're just touching each other and just like, they're, they're trying to figure this out. They're trying to figure the other person out. It's like a puzzle. You know what I mean? All right, and right there, that was beautiful. All right, this is something that, like, it took me a really long time to learn, but Jacob just did it, like, beautiful. Anthony, the kid in green, like, goes to be aggressive, and Jacob's in a, uh, in a staggered stance, right? He's got one foot in front of the other. As soon as he realizes that his opponent is attacking, his feet switch to sugar stance. You know what I mean? He doesn't sprawl. He doesn't, like, his hands are already there. He knows, like, if he shoots, his hands are there. His feet are sugared. He wasn't in bad position. He stayed in good position. He recognized that he didn't have to sprawl the way that he didn't have to do a full defense. He kept himself in good position, whereas a lot of people would see that level change, do a full sprawl, and then they would get either reshot on, they would get flying squirreled or like something, you know what I mean? They would get front headlocked because being flat on your belly, you never want to be in that position. You never want to be flat on your belly in a match, you know what I mean? You only sprawl when someone has beat your head, your chest, and your hands. All right, they go right back to wrestling, trying to find an angle on each other. You see, he snapped and he was circling to try and get that angle, try and beat him to the punch, but uh, Anthony was doing a good job keeping his hips square. Tapping on the head, tapping on the head. Ooh, and right there. Okay, 
First things first, that double leg was beautiful. Beautiful setup, level change. You hit the double leg, he goes for like a uh, whizzer from a double leg, which like doesn't make any sense. What happens, what happens next is you take him down and you don't like, you spend a second thinking. You don't immediately go to like, it should be a reaction that as soon as you feel he's flat, you're already going to like control him. Because you said you wanted to wrestle in college. In college, the time you have to work is so small. Like the amount of time that you have to work a move is like half a second, oftentimes, half a second. And they'll be quicker than this kid, you know what I mean? So as soon as he gets flat, you wanna keep him flat. You wanna make sure he's flat. When you hit a claw, and a claw is good for getting someone flat, but not keeping them flat, you know what I mean? It's good for like controlling two sides and then breaking them down. But once they're already broken down, they have too much mobility in their wrists and their like legs and hips so that they can just push themselves back and pick their hips up and like get onto their base. As soon as you take someone down and their belly's flat, you want to tie up, you want to tie something off. Either get a two on one, control one arm or control the other arm, get a western hook, put a leg in, get a half. You know what I mean? You want to control one of his four body parts between his head, his two arms, and his leg. You need to control one, at least. That's the first thing you should do. You should go into controlling one and then working into controlling the second one and then working into controlling a third one and then you can pin him, like super easy, all right? But what happens is you go for the claw and you hang out there too long. I like. I understand if you're tired or maybe like you just used a lot of energy and you have to think. The, there was like literally a second like for you to do this, but you hung out there too long for him to base up, right? You go to the, you're going for the claw, he bases up. And now when someone would base up like this on me, since you already have, since you're already underneath his armpits, since you're already like at the claw, I would circle, I would circle left. I would circle left, try to get my knee, my shin under his knee and pick his foot up, right? I'm trying to pick his foot up and bring his hips, uh, I wanna pull him on top of me so that we're in the crab ride. And then from that position, I'm gonna start looking for my halves, looking for my arm bars, looking for something. And then like, from the crab ride, you can stick someone super easy. There's a bunch of things you can do. But he gets up, he almost gets out, he almost scored one right there, which would've sucked, especially after you got that takedown, right? So third period starts, he immediately shoots up, and he's fighting hands. You mat return him, which is good, but he immediately goes into a sit out, and before you can defend that sit out, he sits out again, okay, and goes into a Gramby roll, which is good. And like, for those of you that don't know, what he's trying to do is just create that little bit of space in between his hips so he can get his feet on the mat and pivot and square them up. All right, look, make a little bit of space, pivot, right there, and then he tries for a head throw and ends up on his back, all right? So this is a good case of getting ahead of yourself. You know what I mean? He was going for something that he didn't even let, he didn't know how to hit and he was just going for something because he was going crazy, you know what I mean? He was just trying to make this happen. And now what Jacob needs to do, right? He's got his arm around his, uh, around. he's got his right arm around his left arm, right, on the outside. He needs to put Anthony's shoulder right here, okay? So he needs to feed that hand through and put his head put his head to the mat above his shoulder, right? So his head should be right here touching the mat, and then his arm should be threaded underneath his arm, right? Instead of him being like this, he should be like this, right? With your head right here and your hand under here because all his weight is going towards picking this shoulder up. He's just trying to pick this shoulder up. So you wanna put all of your weight on the shoulder he, that he's trying to pick up. The other side, um, with your legs, you're trying to get your knee underneath his elbow so that he's like this, okay? You wanna end up with him on the mat, your knee under his elbow. If you can, pick up his head with your left arm. I know that might've been complicated, but yeah. That way, that way you're just like isolating his shoulder. You're just picking up both arms and like his head. You're trying to keep his right shoulder down and put his left one down, okay? So you need to put your weight on his left one, pick up his arm so he can't post on it, and pick up his head. All right, that was a lot more complicated than I thought it should have been. But he does a good job, he rolls out of that. You're back on top of him. 
And I wish I could see what you were doing. I think you're fighting for a two on one. You get that western hook. See, that's another thing. You let him get back to his base too fast. You need to you need to control something. You need to control something and maybe put more pressure on him. I don't know, like uh out of bounds. Like the only reason he should be able to pick his hips up like that, like how he just did, is because you don't have enough weight on his hips or he's got like too much of a base like it's pretty hard to do that when you don't have an arm when you're not controlling one of your arms it's hard to like jump up to uh to your base like that i couldn't really see was i couldn't see what you were doing with his hand so i don't know you go back he's trying to get out you do a good job following you hit that claw um or no is that a two on one you're circling around to the other side See, right there, I would have been trying to tie that off for an armbar. You go for the ball and chain. Looks like a ball and chain. Following his hips. Out of bounds. On top, he's trying to get out, he's trying to get out. Ooh, you go for a roll through tilt. Oh, that doesn't work. It's right here. It looks like you get too high on his hips. He gets up on one shoulder. Oh, he's got your ankle. All right, so you go for the roll through tilt. He's got he's got an ankle right here. You try to put a leg in. He's got an ankle. And now when he has that ankle, when he picks that ankle up, all right, Ethan Lysak chills in this position all the time. What like what I saw Ethan do in a lot of and a lot of the matches that I watched him do was and like I've hit this on high school kids but I don't know how well this would hit this would work on like a really high level guy you have to train it a lot what he would do is make sure that his arms are underneath his armpit like make sure both arms are underneath grab onto his ankle like pick it up high and then get his free leg under one of his knees and like trying to push it out you know what I mean so like <laughs> If he's got your foot, right, both your arms should be underneath this space, okay? Keeping your hips low. And then just being underneath that arm is a form of control, you know what I mean? You can get elbow to elbow. He can't work the same things. He can't get past. Like if your arm is underneath that, then he can't get past that. So he grabs your ankle. You step out of that. You back out. He goes into a single leg. You go for the funk roll. You go back, you square up, pretty good. He goes, oh, and he ends up on his back. Bro, this is tragic. I don't know why you didn't pick up his head right there. You you had him pinned. Uh, maybe you had your hands locked, but uh, you had him pinned. You should have went for that, uh, for the half. I understand if your hands were stuck underneath him, then that could have been hard. But you should have gone for the half. All right, and then right there, you're waiting too long, dude. You're waiting way too, you're giving him way too much time to think. You need to be hitting something. You need to be going for, like, the easiest way to start controlling one thing is going for a two-on-one, in my opinion. Two arms always beat one, all right? So what I like to do is get the two-on-one, move the elbow behind his hips, past his hips, and then just slip that arm bar in. And then I can tie it off and start working for something else. Right, you got the tight waist. You go for the double leg, he gets out. Oh, oh, that's a third period. Good shot defense. Snap, good shot defense. Ooh! If only that was in bounds. Did you guys see that? He went for a shot and then hit a, like off a shot, he hit a lateral, which is, that's nasty. If you guys can learn that, that's a dirty trick. Did he give you a stalling call for that? Let me see back up like that. Ooh, ooh! All right, you guys. If you guys didn't know, if you guys didn't see that. He went for the shot, 
And like off of a sprawl, you're looking to get two underhooks right uh, on your opponent. So they shoot. You're looking to get your arms underneath here, okay? To do exactly what he did, okay? So what you do is you get elbow to elbow, and there's a bulldog right there. It didn't work right away, but it allowed him to get around his elbow. Even if you don't turn him with it, he got around his elbow and still got the two, right? There, look. So you get under his elbow. Instead of trying to grab a wrist, instead of getting that and grabbing a wrist, you could have totally sunk in a half, right? Instead of trying to just control that wrist, once you're already underneath the arm, basically, if you're trying to control an arm, you're trying to get it out of its comfort zone, right? Its comfort zone where it's strong is like right here, okay? Once you bring your elbow past your hips, then it becomes super weak. Like you can't really do anything with it. And once you bring your elbow past your head, it becomes super weak. And that's what a half and that's what an arm bar accomplish if you do it properly, if you do it well. So quit trying to fight for a wrist. Just go for a half or an arm bar. You hold him down, return him, ooh. And then you catch him with, I think that was a pancake and a Saturday Night Ride. Oh, that poor kid. Woo! Good match. If you guys like that video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Check me out. Uh, I'm going to post these videos every Thursday. So until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.